What's going on, you guys? Avery here, and welcome to another tier list. And this is going to be for the May 2022 format. And yes, I'm hoping that if I make this tier list, Konami will finally give us a damn ban list, although I highly fucking doubt it. So make sure you smash every living crap out of that subscribe button. I really want us to get to 800 subscribers, and I don't want to have to shit on Master Duel every day to do that because. Yeah, it gets views, but I mean, come on, we're a competitive YouTube channel. We're not looking to just shit on Master Shits our entire existence. No, 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 no. Smash it so that we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. So right off the bat, I don't know how to edit these tier list makers. I pretty much just look up ones that have already been made and just go from there. So I do want to say that even though Therion is not on this list, I would put Therion's in the tier uh, one, well, tier 1.5 is a bit much. I would say tier two until it proves itself. Because here's the thing, you can easily brick with Therions. If you open up a whole hand of Therions, you're just not able to play the game because they can't summon themselves other than by having a Therion monster engraved that they can get equipped with. So do keep that in mind. If Therion was on this list for the time being, I would put it in the tier two category. But along with Therions, I am also going to put ABC in tier two. Now, I have seen some plays that Therions can do with ABC. I think it has a lot of potential. I think it has a lot more higher of a potential if things get properly hit on a very soon to have ban list. And who knows, maybe by the time I post this, maybe a ban list will already be out. I don't know. Maybe by the time you see this, there's already a ban list out. And then I get someone commenting, oh, we have a ban list out now. <laughs> Uh, go and look at the fucking date of the video, pal. Anyway, um, and I'll obviously be posting a new one if we do end up getting a ban list and things like that. Um, with things kind of being stale right now, we have to kind of take the format and Therions for what it is. So I do think that ABC slash Therion has a good chance, depending on a ban list. Do I think that they can compete with Branded, which is tier one right now? Fuck no. Uh, ABC does not stand a chance against anything that is tier one right now. It belongs in tier two, even with the Therion engine, until we get a balance to shake things up. Next up is based. Uh, base is tier one. It's it's here to stay until we get a balance. The same goes for Sword Soul. I feel like out of all of the tier one decks, I feel that this is the order. Branded being the best, Sword Soul second, and then base is a close second, but still in third place. You know, this is what sets the trend for Tier 1 decks uh, until we get Splite in Power of the Elements in like three months. Um, so th this is this is what you have to compete against, uh, especially the Brave Engine, which uh, that, that isn't pictured in here. But we all know that Brave exists in almost every deck in the meta right now and needs to be hit in some way on a ban list. Um, minus Sword Soul, depending on your build. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you don't know what these decks do and you are playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, you are not actually playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. You need to know what these cards do if you want to stand a chance in today's meta. Um, let's kind of jump around here a little bit. Uh, Flunderies is tier one. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, the fact that I would have topped that Georgia Regional if I didn't bubble out and get stacked in the last round. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Flunderies is a tier one deck, and it's honestly the easiest tier one deck to play because it literally just comes down to, did you open optimally? Yes. Did your opponent hand trap you? Yes. But if you have the out, then it doesn't matter. And if your opponent doesn't hand trap you and they don't have zombie world, which, spoiler alert, unless they're playing pure zombies, they're not going to have that game won. Uh, you are going to win the game and have a very good time because none of these meta decks right now can really deal with a barrier statue backed up by an empen, especially if you've got Dreaming Town and Map, especially on Explored Win. I mean, the deck just is like branded. It just snowballs. After turn one, you can't break that board. You're, you're getting destroyed. That's just the way it is. Uh, Eldritch coming up close in tier 1.5. Um, this deck has proven itself time and time again. I'm actually going to put Cybers here with Eldritch because, you know, we have the Cybers Eldritch builds. Um, you know, this deck, when it doesn't brick and it can go first or second, really, depending on your build, and you just set five and you've got like Skill Drain, Goes in Rivalry, you have all these floodgates, and just you lock the opponent out of being able to make plays is so damn good. I mean, even whenever I used to just strictly play th uh, Flunder going into the Georgia Regional, you know, Eldritch was a very tough matchup, 
because the only real way I had to stop Eldritch was with Barrier Statue, which would lock him out of their Conquistador and their Wakero and their Scarlet Sanguine and Golden Lord himself special summoning himself. But if Golden Lord's in hand, they're just able to send it in a spell or trap and then send the statue. Well, unless you're playing two statues, uh, you can have a tough time against Eldritch, especially too if they open up Skill Drain. Like, you just lose the game at that point, my guy. Um, next up here, uh, what else do we want to cover? Let's talk about Dragon Link. So Dragon Link is obviously tier 1.5, um, especially now that Branded has the new fusion. I almost want to dump it down to tier 2. Um, but a competent player with the deck that knows what they're doing and knows all of the sequencing and lines of play, you will get rewarded for it. Um, but to, to say that it's tier 1 is a bit of a stretch. Now, I will say... I. Sorry, I didn't see this before. <clears throat> um, Print Kids is definitely tier one up there with Branded. It has very good representation. I wouldn't say that it's tier 1.5, even with Branded in the meta, because it's still a tier one deck. It's still very solid. You have the 60 card adventure DPE builds. And when this deck pops off, it is the best deck of the room, hands down. Um, you have to respect this deck because it's just that good. Um you know, to say that it's tier 1.5 or even tier 2, you're you're kidding yourself. Um, let's kind of jump around here a little bit more. Uh, Lyra Lusic, uh, I don't see... Oh, I do see a Tri Brigade picture, so we can kind of tie these in. Um, so Lyra Lusic slash Lyra Lusic Tri Brigade. Uh, aren't you pretty much just Zeus Turbo the deck at this point? Um, like, they just... This is where Power Creep kind of comes in, right? Like, we start to see these other decks pop up. And, uh, you know, the old tier one decks of their time, s slowly but surely, if I could talk today, slowly but surely get phased out. They have a great Flunder matchup. They have a fantastic Flunder matchup um, because they just, they have all wins. They don't give a shit about Barrier Statue. Um, it, or if they do, it's it's hardly ever that it comes up. Um, so if you've been piloting Tri Brigade for a while, you know, keep in mind, you can also play Tri Brigade branded, you know. The branded lore, which is really funny, it can be played in like so many different decks. It's actually pretty comical. Um, you know, it's it's a tier one point five deck. It's a solid deck. Um, straight dogmatica. I mean, so all right. Here's here's what we're gonna do. Do we have invoke down here? No. Jesus, whoever made this tier list, you don't know the fucking meta. All right, so we're gonna tie this in with uh, invoked. So um, this is like the best of tier two. Um, Keep in mind that you also have, like, branded Dogmatica. I've seen some builds like that. Like, Dogmatica can be tied in with branded. The point that I want to make, though, however, with Dogmatica, Invoke Shadal, all other variants of Invoke Dogmatica, is that it, it is the best of Tier 2. You know, if you are able to keep up with Invoke or even beat it, um, then your deck is doing something right. If you struggle against this, then you're probably in the Rogue or Booty Booty Butt Cheek uh, tiers. Um and it's, it's a solid, consistent deck. You know, you still have Makaba. You still have Winda. You've got Construct. You've got the Shadal engine. I've seen some builds that even play the Branded engine. You have a lot at your disposal. It's just a matter of all of these other decks can just outpace you. Mpen does not give a shit about Invoked. The only thing that it gives a shit about is Raging. And even when you summon that, the deck is just going to play Dreaming Town and bounce that shit or bring out Apex to negate it. Um, you know, there's just a lot of ways to out these lower tier decks. Uh, same goes for Heroes. You know, we've seen hero branded top. We've seen just straight heroes. I think it's still a very good tier two deck because when it pops off, if that board can't be broken, it pops off. But it loses to well-timed hand traps. It It's kind of like Flunder in that regard. It loses to well-timed hand traps and you just have better fucking options. Like, that's just the sad truth. I'm sorry. I love heroes. I want to play heroes so bad, but I don't want to waste time, excuse me, learning lines of play that if I just get hand trapped, which with my dog shit luck, as I've talked about plenty of times on this channel, I'm going to get fucking hand trapped. If you want to open up Ash against a Shadow Mist or Stratos, play against me, because if I'm playing heroes, you're going to open up that Ash every single damn time. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 Phantom Knight. This is the worst of tier one. This deck beats itself. It auto loses to D Shifter. So this deck auto loses to Macro and D Fisher if that's being played. It, if you mess up the lines of play, you're going to lose the match, or lose the game, rather, excuse me. Um, it's solid with the Brave Engine, but it's the worst of Tier 1. I almost want to put it in Tier 1.5, but 
it's something that you should know about because when it pops off, it makes the best boards. It really does. But when it doesn't pop off, it's it's a hard time. Here's another deck that has a good matchup against Flunder and some other decks when it wants to combo off. Uh, Virtual World. I hate this deck with a passion. <laughs> um, Virtual World, it bricks like a motherfucker. It really does. But when it a is able to pop off, you're going to have a good time. Um, it's funny because one of my buddies uh, in my local Jacksonville community, he said that he loves Virtual World. He said, but as much as I love the deck, it just bricks too much. It beats itself too much. And similar to Flunder, when it bricks, you just you beat yourself. Um it's, it's here in Tier 2. There are many better options you could be playing. Heroes, I would make the argument Heroes doesn't brick as much as Virtual World, you know, on a good day. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. Earthbox is Rogue AF. Uh, I don't know what Earthbox does. Uh, my buddy played it against me. It seems to be like it, make, it makes a lot of plays and doesn't accomplish a whole lot. And I know that the deck used to play Appalosa, but now that they, they play all the Infinite Track stuff, they're locked into machines. So you can't even play Appalosa anymore. If you know this deck, you're going to get rewarded for it. But don't ask me what it does. I don't know what the fuck it does. Um, Salad, Rogue, you have the occasional person that tops that doesn't want to show their fucking deck list because they think that they've got the secret sauce when it's eventually going to get discovered, and it probably already has at this point. It's a Rogue deck, and it's cute, and when it's able to pop off and build its board and recycle its ashes, it's, it's pretty cool. It's kind of cute. So, Sky Striker, even with the Brave and DPE engine, I'm still going to say that it's Rogue um, because you have to keep in mind that we have Therions in the meta now. Uh, a ban list could obviously shake things up, with the Brave Engine and DP package at Vertanaconda and all that. Um, we are getting new Sky Striker support, but we don't really know much about it. Um, and I think just on that fact alone, it needs to go into Rogue. Because yes, it can keep up with some of the Tier 1, 1.5, and 2 decks. But how consistently is it really keeping up with those decks? Like, if you had the choice between playing you know, Sky Striker and Flunder, why would you not go with Flunder when it just has a strictly better matchup against all these tier one decks? Whereas Sky Striker, basically you got to go second, depending on your build. Um, although most Sky Striker builds want to go second. And then you give the opportunity to all these tier one decks to build their board. And if you don't open up the proper outs, you're just losing the game. Um, same goes for Zodiac. I would put it in the booty butt cheeks category, but Zeus is a card. So it's probably the the worst of rogue quite honestly um there's a lot of other things that you could be playing um drytron i gotta put it in tier two eva's ban ben tens at one um it, it just even with the new agent support which i've seen some builds play i mean is it really enough like let's be honest with ourselves here is it really enough to keep up with this stuff no it's not i think it's a very good deck but it goes in tier two when you have so many better options. Um, let's see. Alter guys to the booty booty butt cheeks. Burning Abyss is booty booty butt cheeks. Um, what are you fucking doing playing Thunder Dragons? Nah, you you don't even have Colossus. Get the fuck on out of here. <laughs> I sound like such a dick. I'm sorry. Just these decks are bad. I'm sorry. Um, DDD. So to the people who spent $25 on an alleged Excel sheet that shows you all the combos, you wasted your fucking money. <laughs> like, you honestly did. You could have just gone on YouTube and watched that shit for free. Or you could have printed out proxies like I did with Therions and play tested hands. If you can learn the combos to this and you know how to play around hand traps, good on you. But I'm playing something easier like Flunder or Sword Soul or Branded instead of you popping off for 20 minutes. Like, these decks are much more simpler. People don't want to learn this shit. And it produces much better boards. Dinos. Uh, ha ha. Rogue or booty? Uh, here. I'm sorry. It goes in booty. Uh, Plunder Patrol is going in rogue. Um, so here's the thing. Plunder Patrol is, is cool. It can really throw people off. Uh, if the, if you, if the opponent does not know what the deck does and you are the plunder player, you will have a very good time because just like me when I topped with Trickstar when they first came out, people don't know what my shit did. <laughs> Same with Plunder. If people don't know what your shit does, they're not going to know what to expect. If they don't take the time to read your freaking cards, yeah, then they will greatly get punished for it. And a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players, just like I said when I topped with Trickstars, they'll read your cards, but they won't read your cards. They might just briefly skim it 
and they still won't know what your shit does. That's why anytime I go to an event and someone says, what does a card do? I, I just say, you can read it. Just go ahead and pick up my card and read it because at that point, I don't have to tell you what the card does. You can read it and figure it out for yourself. Um, and Dino's, you know, Ultimate Conductor just doesn't get you there anymore. Like, it, what are you doing in Dino? Can you even play the Adventure Engine? Like, I don't touch Dino. Like, yeah, there was the FTK going around that lasted for like five minutes in a week. But, I mean, no one is talking about it anymore. And even then, like the Bish Balkan stuff, it's cool. But once people knew about it, that FTK was just blown out of the water. So, guys, this is my tier list for May 2022, assuming that we don't get a ban list until the dinosaurs come back into existence. Um, I think that ABC has a lot of potential. Um but it all depends on what happens with a ban list. It all depends on how much people incorporate Therions into their decks. And in three months' time, I, I know I'm saying that it's three months from now, but three months can fly by in Yu-Gi-Oh! We're going to have Splite, and that is going to be tier zero. That's going to completely take this tier list. Like, you might as well take this tier list and crumple it up and throw it up in the garbage because all of this is going to get shaken up by Splite. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this tier list. If you enjoyed seeing this, please... Let me know in the comments and with a like. I, I like putting these tier lists together, especially whenever I'm able to make a booty booty butt sheet category. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.